So the question is, what do you want? Short term for sure money or to find out what you are? And we got to pick one and then stick with it and stick with the plan and go to that surrender that weirdly gave you money when you needed it before. That surrender to God that bizarrely paid your bills instantly when you needed it. What if we start to live there? I mean, it's showing you full proof. It's the way to do it, isn't it? It's actually showed you, hey, when you tried to make money, you didn't. When you surrendered to me, you did. That's because you're on a frequency that requires a connection to source now. And making money through egoic practice will just make you exhausted, stressed, and it won't work. Hi, Kyle. I can't tell the difference between sitting through the pain while doing something that's good for me and pushing myself to do something that might not be the best alignment for me. Wow. Who's asking that question, by the way? For example, meditation always leaves me better off, but there's usually resistance in the beginning that I need to push through. How do I know when I'm supposed to let go of something when it's, supposed, when it's something heavy I need to let go of? Let's have Christina come on. That feels like a very Kyle's going to get in there and go deeper with this question. Um, can we call you Christina? Does that, that is a great question, actually. And I think that's a, that's actually a big question I get, you know, kind of how do I know what's my highest and what's me pushing through something and what's my expansion? And this question might be perfect for us to learn more based on what's making you ask that. Hi, Christina. Hi. How are you? I am good. How are you? I'm fantastic. Thank you for bringing me on. Yes, absolutely. Okay, tell me, tell me the question. Let's go deep and let's go in there and see what's asking it and where it's coming from. Um, so I feel like I have these inspirations to do things and they make, very, like they make a lot of sense to me. Like for example, I wanted to come to the US and it just felt right and I went here and it's been great. And then there are things like meditation that I start doing them and like there's they're also called to me in the same way and then I do them and then I feel right and then there's like making money like brand like I do branding and design and I don't want to work a nine-to-five job so I want to do it on my own but it feels like such a struggle and such heaviness that I I don't know if it's something that I I don't know if I'm doing the right thing Yes, you're not. <laughs> but you can keep doing it until you realize that. Like, in other words, there really is no right or wrong thing. But what I hear, let me just offer the, so you guys hear what I'm hearing. I feel energetically that the way you're making money is coming from a have to or should vibration. That, yeah. and is that right? Do you know what I mean by that? Yeah, I don't know really what other way to do that correct and so m your belief which almost is every person's belief about money so there's nothing wrong with it but it, it it still might not be the highest truth but your belief about money is there should be a specific way that you egoically understand right that you understand the way yeah so do you have the way as much do you say how about anything else in your life that's going really well or is it kind of something that's just going really well like i don't know relationships or health or certain things are you as married to a way with that same frequency of stress about those things as you do with money no there are things that are just that i find it very easy to let go of okay like friendships, I find it really easy to attract just the people that and, align with me. And when you're, when you let go of those friendships that don't align, do you have a very specific long question that you never answer of how am I going to let go of them? What's the way I do it? What's the no, way? No, it just sort of happens. Yeah. It just sort I of just happens. drift away and have less interest and they yeah. have less interest in me. Right. So what if money is the same thing? And what if, what if I get that we live in a paradigm that's never taught us that? In fact, we have a paradigm that's really taught us how to energetically, egoically do it. And you might notice one of the big things that have come out of 2020 and 2021 are those how to do it ways with money are not working very well anymore. Yeah, because they're, they're 
like they have been, I've had uh, opportunities where I pushed through it and I made money. And now I feel like I'm trying to repeat it. Like a yeah. few months ago, I kind of let it go and I did a thing and then suddenly I had an influx of money and I've been trying to like find the thing that made me do it. Hmm. What do you think but, on the deepest level? Let me ask you this on the deepest level. What do you think the, and this is a big question for everyone. When you made money, what do you think the biggest factor was? What, whatever happened, there was this thing where you had an influx of money. What do you think the biggest factor was? I remember like the night before just giving everything away to God. I remember doing that. Oh, so major, yeah. major surrender. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Major surrender. Okay. Was yeah. it also, let me ask you this. Was it really exciting to you like to be in that thing and to feel like this kind of collaboration with source or was there something that happened where you were in the pocket energetically about it? I was, it was sort of during a time where I, I was like, I, I didn't know where I would get my rent money from. And it got to the point where I really didn't know what to do. So I just let it go. Uh -huh. And then it suddenly came about. And like, I remember during those few days, I just, I was just here mm -hmm. in the moment. I feel like I'm not kind of answering my own question. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, you're, so you were here <laughs> in the moment right? Had, yeah. Yeah. Is, do you think that had you been stressing about money and not here, would you have made it that time? I don't know. Probably not. What was the factor that made you surrender? In other words, what was it that you're actually so screwed that rent is now due that there's literally nothing left you can do? You're kind of like, shit, I'm out. I have nothing I can do. I'm screwed. Yeah. Surrender. I was stressing about it for weeks and like the date kind of approached closer and closer and I really didn't know what to do wow. and it was just like a few days left that I'm like well I'm here I'm alive I should just enjoy the last few days I have wow. being <laughs> check this out so what I'm hearing is you were stressing about it this is kind of exciting everybody you'll get this you were stressing about it for weeks so you were in, really. you were you were egoically involved for weeks and then finally, when it was like on the story of you and how you're going to make money was on its deathbed, you finally were like, I, I'm out of control here. I don't know what to do. And then what happened? How did money just show up? Um, a few, like, I had sent a few emails to design and agencies before that never replied to me. And they all suddenly, like two of them emailed me on the same day. Mm -hmm. And, uh, like a friend of a friend needed some design work and they reached out to me. Like I just got a bunch of work in the course of two days. So what you're saying to me was everything you were fighting for finally showed up the second you didn't need it. The second yeah. you gave up, the second you surrendered. Right. So do you think that the long stressing before was just in the way of you receiving money earlier? looks like it yeah okay so are you in that pattern again right now do you get what i'm saying are you in the pattern of now i worry about it and i don't yeah. need, i don't surrender to god i don't ask god for help i don't let go until i'm on my deathbed again financially right so i guess that so with that how do i know like when i let go that god isn't calling me to do the next thing like for example when I go on YouTube and I get those become a digital marketer ad, I always click on them because I want to know, but then like, because what if God is calling to me through the ad and maybe that's the thing or so, maybe. Well, let me yeah. ask you this. Let me ask you this because something tells me your awareness is actually higher than that. Let me ask you this. Is that your highest or is that a should do? Like you should know this within five seconds. Is that a what you should do that's preventing your surrender? Or is that your true expansion highest? It's not my highest. It's not your highest. I didn't put the words in your mouth. You did, right? Yeah. Right? You're at a frequency, I can already tell, that doesn't believe in that. But you don't know that you're in that frequency. Do you understand what I'm saying? You don't know that you know. 
And one of the things we can do in this call is have you know that you know. Your frequency is higher than the I should do kind of thing that teaches you how to do that. That doesn't mean you won't have actions, but they're gonna be called actions. And these should actions are actually in the way of your actual expansion happening because these are the final little things that you think are what you should do, but they're actually little addictions that are stopping you from real guided surrender to take you to a real magic place. You've actually never got to see you with out full surrender for a long time like you've never you've never got to see you in tons of full surrender for a long long time which is where higher things can come and see you're still looking at the things that show up on youtube versus that show up here right and you give more credit to the things that show up on youtube because those are lower consciousness beings that are present no and no offense and i'm not talking shit or anything they're all perfect but there's a you that can see through that what do you think, what, let me ask you this, what do you think is, this is a weird thing to say, but what do you think is a frequency that calls to your body more? One of those marketers that says, I'm going to show you how, and they show you a Lamborghini in their driveway, or Eckhart Tolle. Eckhart, I, yeah. Okay. <laughs> I watched everything he's made. Right, well, there's some people that are at a consciousness where the Lamborghini guy is better, right? Because, and, and so they actually might do well because they actually are at a frequency that doesn't know about a higher real level of surrender. But you have the curse slash breath, blessing, blessing of being on a frequency that's past that. So it would be a dip down for you. You would be like someone doing calculus, trying to figure out instead how to like do what the third graders are teaching. Hey, do you want to learn cursive? I'm going to teach you cursive. Yeah, but you're in calculus. You're in, you're in a frequency that, that's, that's bigger than that. And your pain is that you just aren't aware that you're at that frequency. Your pain is that you think that those things that remain, which are should do's, which you probably actually feel familiar from your childhood, right? Like maybe parents had should do, or you've heard other frequencies. So that feels like a more familiar world to you, right? But there might be you, I don't know, but you might be birthing into a frequency of surrender and just need to understand that's trying to happen. And, and by the way, then you could be, a, if whatever you're marketing, you could be a gift for people at higher frequency. I guarantee you pretty soon, higher frequency will be worth more than hard strategic marketing tricks. And, and by the way, it will need less too. Do you get what I mean by that? Like a lot of times people are like, do you want this Lamborghini? Are the kind of people that need to buy a Lamborghini? And you could be like in this place where you could just be in this higher frequency where you know where you are. And this might not just pay in money because I don't even think money is going to be the currency for much longer. I really don't. I think that there's a, a we're actually being taken to a vibration where compassion being highest excitement alignment are going to be a higher currency very soon than money. Because we keep printing money, but you can't just print high alignment. That's an earned thing. So you're at a frequency that can kind of see through it, but you just aren't aware that you could see through it. And that was what I'm here to reflect to you. What's this feel like? Does this feel like relief or do I feel totally way off and, and I'm wrong? I feel like I'm right at the edge. Like I'm about to climb on top of a mountain and I keep wanting to go down because yeah. I know it so well. And like, I don't know what's like up here and I'm, I'm looking for reasons to argue with you. Like I have that come up and it's like, yeah, but well, how do I actually make money though? Like it's yeah. still coming up. So that's, a but problem, I know you. Right? And that doesn't mean the, the belief is that you would never ever do anything that will be worth anything. If you just follow your highest excitement and create a whole new earth through your frequency, like that you'll just sit and go duh and not think of anything or have higher level ideas or bring real inspiration to the world or whatever else is supposed to be your calling. But the weird thing is when you're egoically looking for something, you're blocking off all of the other ways that are just trying to take care of you, that are trying to take care of you in, in all the ways. Like you really don't need money as much as you need your needs met. That might happen through money, but that also can happen through so many other ways. And if you're trying to create some giant number with yourself, then you might be wanting something that the highest version of you actually doesn't want. 
So that part of you that wants to argue the point is that you can already feel you're talking that it's from lower on the mountain, right? Yeah. So if you see that it's a lower frequency, that means you're higher than it. Yeah. So your new growth is to let it fall off, let it be seen, let it be loved, let it die. We need that paradigm to go. You, you don't need to learn tricks to manipulate sales. You're going to have so many people that are amazing that see right through that and won't be aligned with you. Do you get what I'm yeah. saying? Your value is amazing. Like it's amazing in itself. It's not just the money. It's about, I want to do something that's valuable yes. for humanity. Yes. And I can't figure out which, because so, I get inspired by many things. I want to do all of the things. So but to do something valuable, thing. let me ask you this, to do something valuable for humanity, does it require marketing tricks and whatever the YouTube ad was? I don't know if it doesn't. I don't know if has a marketing team. Yeah, but they're a byproduct of his frequency, not, you've never heard Eckhart be like, I have, I have 10 <laughs> seats left if you run to the back of the room. It's usually 2,997, but today only, you'd never hear that. That'd be hilarious. There's only one Eckhart Tolle, and that's why he's valuable. But you also can see a million things for free of Eckhart Tolle, so you can see him at any level. And there isn't a lot of tricks because he's just offering free content by the millions all over the place, right? So at the end of the day, there's only one of them. So yeah, if you want to work with him one-on-one -on -one or something, it's going to be crazy expensive. But he also is offering his stuff to the world. How many things have you seen that are in that lower frequency that don't tell you that much and go, I'm going to tell you all the things when you give me stuff? A lot right? Eckhart's offering years of content for free. You it'd take almost your whole life to watch all of Eckhart's videos. Like it would take a long time to keep watching and he'd, 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 you'd have content forever. He's giving for free, right? Yeah, there's still a marketing team, but that's a byproduct of him. He wasn't, he was never like, I got to get a million followers. That's never happened. He sat on a bench for two and a half years and did nothing. And Oprah came right to him. And imagine if he, instead of sitting on the bench, was like, how do I market? I got to get the right sales. And he didn't sit and listen. And he, we would all see right through him. Like, why do you know his name? Because of the frequency he holds. And that's available in you. We know his name. We know who he is because he's the real thing. You have that. And that's what's calling to you. So the question is, what do you want? Short term for sure money or to find out what you are? And we got to pick one and then stick with it and stick with the plan and go to that surrender that weirdly gave you money when you needed it before. That surrender to God that bizarrely paid your bills instantly when you needed it. What if we start to live there? I mean, it's showing you full proof. It's the way to do it, isn't it? It's actually showed you, hey, when you tried to make money, you didn't. When you surrendered to me, you did. That's because you're on a frequency that requires a connection to source now. And making money through egoic practice will just make you exhausted, stressed, and it won't work. Yeah. I mean, you actually got evidence. That's the way. Not use tricks. We all see through that now. Yeah. But how do I know when it's calling me to do something? Hmm. Like when sometimes I meditate and I'm like, oh, I should go draw something. But am I distracting myself from a, some kind of pain that's coming up or am I actually inspired? I, I don't know which sure. one. I understand that. So let me ask you this. What's the worst that happens if you go draw something when it has that? You will learn if you were inspired or if it was a distraction. That's the worst thing that can happen. Do you get what I'm saying? The, the worst yeah. that happens, like, do you notice how there's a life and death aspect? To, what if I go draw something when it wasn't a calling? Well, then you'll learn. I do a ton of stuff yeah. all day that's not a calling to learn it's not a calling. 
and and your calling has to change so you can't learn that until you make what you think is a calling and then it no longer serves you so first of all we got to not try to nail it first we just got to go i surrender and i'm going to learn from you source and it's okay if i don't do it right is everyone getting that i can't i don't have comments on but it's like i I, I surrender to you and I'm going to do the very best I can. And you show me, you know, you show me what you need to show me. Worst case scenario is I'll be off for a minute and then I'll realign. Can I ask yes. you a question? Yes. The part of you that's scared you'll do it wrong in your childhood, what happened if you did it wrong? I know exactly where this is going now. Mm. Uh, <laughs> um they used to hit us in kindergarten so and, that's who's yeah, talking and whenever we did bad things or like yeah, even i hung up this like paper crochet thing wrong and like they hit me immediately because of that yes so first of all that sucks and we need to bring that to light because that's child abuse and that's terrible you were abused yeah. And that little girl needs to be seen and loved and Source is doing everything it can to bring love to that, to heal that and love you. But if you don't let that come to a surface, then a kindergartner is making the God decisions. And it's literally saying, I don't wanna go draw during meditation because I might get whipped. And that's coming up to show you that's the next thing to heal now. It doesn't feel raw though. Like it just feels like it happened. Like, mm -hmm. and I feel like I'm supposed to feel different about it so that I can cry and we can do the thing where I cry. Let me ask but, you um, this. You don't have to answer this, but how old are you? I'm 23. 23. Got it. So just so you know, a part of you is still developing up until 25 that has a consciousness that starts to separate from the so basically you're still actually so connected to the part of you that was in that that as it starts like at 26 27 where you can start breaking off and see the patterns more i'm not saying you won't cry or feel things but there's still actually a part of your brain that's developing up till 25 years old so i understand that there's a you that might not be crying it out like you've seen other people do right away but that's okay. But I just want to bring awareness, even if we don't get it by crying it out right and now, that the I just want to show you, and you don't have to do anything with this or transcend it through crying or anything, that the one here that's trying to do it right is the one trying to not get hit. And so so if you are a if you if you just take that information and say, it's okay if I don't get this right. See, when, when you surrendered to God, you were finally at a place where you were past the patterns where you were protecting yourself from doing it wrong. Do you get what I'm saying? Like, it's almost like I got to do it right. I got to do it right. Okay, rent's due next week. Fuck it. Okay, I'm ready to do it wrong. I give up. I'm willing to do it wrong now. And then it's weirdly rewarding you financially because you're past the part of you that's trying to keep itself alive. You're in surrender where it's like now we're financially screwed so surrender and all of a sudden money showed up right so you were actually at a place where you were past your pattern that was trying to protect yourself uh from getting hit again it's weird i feel like i'm hearing you like not in my head i feel like i'm hearing you like inside Correct. Because I don't even, like, I, even the part of me that's trying to say something or looking for something to say, it's not like it's a different. Correct. Level. That's consciousness. You're actually seeing, like, weirdly, this is per, it's kind of fun to, like, show you, like, you're 23, so you're just learning these. Do you notice there's different places, different voices are coming from right now? Yeah. Like, there's a you that hears me here. That's because I'm talking from here, not here. If I was talking from here, I'd be like, what, what's Macy's got to sail on today? Or like, what's just circumstances, right? But I'm talking from here. I'm talking from possibility. I'm talking from whatever. And to hear me, you actually have to listen from a different place in your body. 
So you're actually listening from where I'm talking. So it's like my chest and my heart are talking to your heart. And the patterns that you've been moving from have been the protector, which is here, which is the mind, which is the ego, right? So now we're talking in this place that's a different frequency. So the part that says, what do I do? Where do you feel that in your body? The part that goes, what do I do about money? And how do I not do it wrong? And what do I follow the drawing or whatever? Feel it a lot in my forehead and in my chest. In your forehead and chest. Okay. What do you feel in your forehead? The voice that says, what do I do? Like, what does it feel like? Is it pain? It's like a dense heaviness. Dense heaviness. Like, okay. like, a, like a fog, like a heavy fog that I can't see through. So I want you to just notice it because this is you becoming aware of an ego, of, of an ego. I was gonna say egoic and then just change to ego as it came out, ego. But I want you to just be aware of the heaviness of that voice. Okay, just become aware of it. The reason I want you to become aware of it is because you'll start to actually define that voice might not be the truth. So if that voice is saying we got to do something about and you could start to treat it like it's a roommate that's a little annoying and crazy and just bring love to it. I hear you voice, but I'm going to follow my calling. And you don't go, you're right. We do have to panic. And ah, this guy says do this and I'll make 20 million a year and I'm going to follow that. That's the answer to this. But there's, you're already breaking to a place where you feel its heaviness. So this voice has a heaviness. That's a sign that it might not be you, that it might be a pattern. And that heaviness eventually will be purged. You're so aware for 23, that heaviness will be purged very soon. So what if we don't know what to do and we just are here for a second? And we, where do you feel that? Do you, do you feel an energy that like, okay, I'm in surrender. What did I do with God? And what am I doing in this moment? Where do you feel that in your body? I feel it in my smile. I don't know if I can, if that makes sense. But like when I hear that, I feel it like, like smiling. Okay, that's so cool. <laughs> All right, so you feel in your smile. Another I don't know if that's the body part, but. Yeah. Um, so I, it's a, that's an awesome body part to say, like it's in my smile. I love that. So let me ask you this. So, okay. So tell me if I got this right, you are identifying at least two voices now, right? Two voices in different places of your body. This is called consciousness. This is what awareness is. You're starting to get aware of different voices. So you're not just one linear narrative anymore. That's just one story. You're seeing a voice here and a voice here and a voice here. And you're like, what the hell? Like, what are these voices? Yeah. Okay, now let's find another voice. What's just around you? What's the space doing? Like what's, what, can you feel actual like energy in the air around you? Can you feel an all is fine no matter what kind of love in the space around you? The space that's beating your heart is not invested in how you're gonna make money. The space that's here, there's some energy that's keeping you alive, that's keeping your organs going, that's keeping everything flowing. What about those energies? What, it, what does it say? What is that voice? What is the voice of right this space that's around you? It's so familiar. And it's so, it's saying, Not saying any words, but like what I feel from it, it's it's like a calm excitement. Calm excitement, beautiful. Is it? Does it feel safe? Oh yeah, beyond yeah. like where danger doesn't exist. Correct. Safe. Yeah. So, which voice of the three voices we've identified so far? do you think is the most truly you? The last one is the closest mm -hmm. to that. Mm -hmm. Yes. All of the voices, you are whatever voice you connect to the most, but you can choose to listen to this one that actually says, actually, you're 100% safe, you're completely abundant, 
listen to this voice for a while. And sometimes the voice won't talk in words with next steps. It might just come in and heal, or it might actually knock out patterns that are like trying to protect you or whatever. But this voice here is a voice that's legit. Now, most people don't pay attention to this voice because they need to have problems to keep their story alive. But if you choose to listen to the voice long enough, it will, it, it's this to me, this voice is what love actually is, right? Everything else is a movie or the movie, The Notebook or a love song or whatever. And it's just created this attachment thing we call love. But this love here that's here that you connect to, this is what love is. This transcends everything. Now this voice, I believe, and I've learned, completely contains your income. It completely contains, but we ignore it all day because we go to this voice. And, and this voice is staying alive literally just based on the fact that you listen to it and cater to it. So imagine now you have three roommates in your Actually house. <laughs> yeah, okay. So imagine in your, in, in your circumstance of your spiritual world, you have three roommates, a panicky roommate that lives here, okay? When you listen to them, you feel panic, you feel stressed and annoyed, a, a, an optimistic voice that's here that's really cool. And you can sometimes go to that voice. I kind of narrow, I kind of bounce between this voice and the now voice, right? And sometimes I'll hear the, the first voice too, but I use those to go to the second and the third. Like the first voice says this, what do we do? Okay, I got an optimistic thing here and that voice, and then the third voice is like, it doesn't matter, it's fine. So the question is, which of the voices do you spend the most time with? Because whatever one you spend the most time with, you're going to get more of. So the I don't know what to do voice, if you spend a ton of time with that, like, what do I do? Ah, this YouTube guy says uh, he's got a Lamborghini and he reads a lot of books. I'm going to be with him. Like, okay, exactly. now, <laughs> you're catering to that voice, right? But Eckhart is talking about this voice. And you are excited about Eckhart because you've already connected to this voice. Most 23-year-olds don't have already a, an awareness of this voice. Some do, but they're still developing a consciousness, right? That's still running from the pattern, right? So you're already aware of that voice, right? So you're contracting if you go to the Lamborghini voice and you're, you're freeing yourself if you go to this voice. And so what we need to do is tell this voice, hey, I, I, no offense, you're great, I, I just want to see other voices. And then you're going to just totally chill with this eckhart all that is love voice that's right here. And if you do, I swear to God, you're going to start the practice of living in that moment of surrender. And you're going to be shocked because you're going to want less, but be blown away and surprised by more that comes to you. Like you'll, you might lose something that you egoically thought you really wanted, but you'll be blindsided by something that's surprising you, you didn't even know was there. You stop looking for the answer to the small voices, one solution out of the whole world. And then you start to just live in this joy now. And you're just so excited about everything that's happening that your, your mood goes up, your frequency goes up, you start to just see everything in the world as an opportunity, including the negative things. You're just like, what could this mean for me? And you start to win at life because everything is a possibility now. Everything is perfect, right? So your job, instead of, and if you had the choice between figuring out in the short term right now how to egoically make money, and this is my question to everybody, or know, or find out who you are, and choose that surrender and go for it no matter what. And tell the universe, you want to know about the truth of what you are more, even if it means you're going to be broke for a while, even if it means you're going to surrender your need for money and put some shit on credit cards for a minute or borrow something and stay with the learning of what you are, what would you pick? What would you rather have? I'd rather have the second thing. Yeah. So the universe responds to what you do. And if what you're doing is going into his garage and looking at his Lamborghini and <laughs> answering that or anyone, whoever it is, uh, and or you're listening to this voice, you get what I'm saying? You're going to get more. And this, I swear, as you keep learning this voice, shit like money will not be an issue. You can't, from this frequency, understand all the specifics of how it's trying to show up because it's way bigger than you understand. I 
feel like I'm falling in space, but like in a like floating, maybe. Yeah. But also falling because I don't know where I am. But I know exactly where I am. Yes. Yes. <laughs> That's because you're the space. That's because you're aware. How you doing? I feel like I'm inside of myself. Like I'm hearing everything you're saying and I'm saying these words and I don't know who's saying them. Yes. Welcome to Kayawaska. <laughs> is that what you gave me? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Nothing is as true 